Unser, yeah. Unser, welcome back to King It, baby. Yay. <laughs> Season three, we're back in the building. How are you feeling, babes? Oh, you know what, Craig? I'm feeling fantastic, mate. Season three is upon us. And I'm going to have a great time. We're going to talk about some great things. Yeah, loving it. Can't wait. This is like one of the best things we could talk about. So I'm I'm buzzing. It's going to be great. So um, for people who don't know who we are, how would you sell King in It? What's our accolades? Oh, for God's sake. King in It, right? They're <laughs> right. these two guys. Well, one's a girl. And they go out and they do these like wicked challenges. Um, and they get into all kinds of mayhem, all kinds of trouble, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> and they uh, they just have a good time. They say that they do it wrong so you can do it right. I love how you talk in the third person about yourself. I do that a lot, don't yeah. I? And you, you always tell me off. Does that not mean I'm more intelligent? It means you're um, an egomaniac. Right. <laughs> all right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine. So um, this is season three. We're talking about the Mongol Rally. Um, so a quick little plug for season two, which was India, yes. which isn't available on YouTube, but it is available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all that. You know, some people, Craig, they like big up their channel. They big up. Oh, my God. My last video was insane. Go and watch it if you haven't seen it before. But please, I mean, I'm going to tell you now, right? Skip season one. It wasn't that Don't great. Don't talk about season it one. Was, like you know, we were new and, you know, it wasn't the best. I'm not going to lie. We didn't have a setup like this either, do we? No, we did not. But season two, please go and listen to it because it was just hilarious and and life threatening all at the same time. <laughs> they're, they're some of the funniest like bits of content I think we've ever created. Yeah, so we drove a, a rickshaw through India. Did we say that already? No, no, that was the challenge. <laughs> um, that was tough, but nothing was tougher. And more incredible than the Mongol Rally, was it? I mean, you just say those words, Mongol Rally, and I've got a, a beaming smile on my face. But I just I just don't feel like we're going to get around that people... you got to do it, you, you know? you got to do it. The, story, the stories we can tell and like the friendships that we made, we can talk about them until we're blue in the face, but people won't get it unless they do it. Mm. It is another world out there. It really is. So we're buzzing to be talking about that. It was our favourite ven- adventure we've ever done. Like, India was class, but we always talk about the rally. I think we've said Mongol rally every day since Probably. we've done it. Yeah, yeah. So this is like a running joke now. We're, like, we always say, we always are. And then, you know, when we were on the Mongol rally and we'll be like, oh, oh, you did the rally. You did the Mongol rally. <laughs> did you do the Mongol rally? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did the rally. So um, here's, what is the rally? For people like, I've just found this video, got no idea what you're talking about. Um, it is labelled the greatest motor and adventure on the planet. Yes, it is, Craig. So what you can expect in this podcast, what it's like to drive 10,000 miles in a shit car mm-hmm. from the Czech Republic to Russia. Yes. Continuously breaking down crooked coppers, mm-hmm. never eating, basically living off petrol station snacks. They do say if you want to lose weight, go on the Mongol rally. <laughs> That's so true. Uh, what it's like to go to hospital in Uzbekistan. Uh, drama in the convoy, which <laughs> oh. came in like a curveball. We didn't even oh, expect that, no. did we? <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, how we felt during all of it from the highs to the lows. Yeah. Uh, seeing wild animals like goats, deer, camels Made and bears. Life. Made the trip, Craig. <sighs> Basically, we'll be talking about everything that we that didn't make the vlogs and yeah. the documentary. Yeah. Because if you haven't seen them, we've got a whole series and a little yeah. feature length, haven't we? Yeah, we do have a 30-odd part uh, <laughs> series of vlogs on our YouTube channel. Honestly, they're mm. worth the watch. I would go. Because I feel like that's a little taster of them, of people watching, like kind of being on the rally with us, coming through our journey with us, feeling the emotions. Definitely give them a watch, yeah. So there might also be some tips, possibly, if you are planning on doing it. Oh, don't take tips off, the, off us. <laughs> Absolutely not, Craig. Don't be, don't be giving out no advice. We're not good for that. So why should people listen? Um, so that you guys can do the opposite of what we do. Yeah. And then you no, might do well. No, I'm so proud of how we did that rally. <laughs> like the planning and everything that went into it. We were spot on, Craig. We, we excelled. We did, we did all right. So yeah, you're going to be laughing at our pain for most of this. Cause, um, yeah. yeah. So today we're talking about the prep and the madness that went into sorting this nutty journey. Yeah. <laughs> Shall I do it now? Press it. Shall I do it Press now? It. Yeah. Can we just take a minute to talk about this setup? <laughs> wait for it, wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get ready, Rumble! I'm fine! 
Charles. Oh my god. <laughs> I'll try not to be like Charlie Sloth and overkill those sound effects, but they're so good. You absolutely will. Guys, he's been buzzing for this, waiting to be able to press those oh. buttons. <laughs> so shout out to Rode. They sent us the Rodecaster Pro, which is what we're recording this on. Mm-hmm. Um, so the be- but the best part about this setup is that we've got a Bluetooth connection, so we can call people. Yeah. So what we're going to do in this podcast is we're going to figure out you know, what parts of the journey certain people came in have got mental stories. Yeah. We're going to get them on the blower yes. so they can tell their story. So all the boys we met on the rally. Yeah. It's going to be wicked, It's going it? to be hilarious, honestly. Um, so what would you say to someone who's considering taking on the rally? Give me a ring. You, you actually would. As well. <laughs> Amy was on the phone the other day and there's a, like on loudspeaker, this guy had a Russian accent. I was like, who are you speaking well, to? Well, he goes... Um, He's from he's from an Irish team, and obviously my family are Irish. You know, I, I've got a good connection with the Irish. I was like, she's like my boy, mate. Give me a ring because he had so many questions. I was like, I am not going to write out an email of a lengthy length. <laughs> I'd rather just talk to you on the phone. So he rang me, and he had a Russian accent, and I was like, whoa, okay, trying to like figure out at the Why end what like he that? was saying because it was so strong I couldn't understand it properly. I thought you understood Russian, though. Oh, my Russian people. <laughs> The Russian space station. <laughs> yeah. So you, your advice would be give you a ring? I've got so much advice, but it depends what they want to know, you know? So the question is, what <laughs> would you say to someone who's considering taking on the rally? Um, all right. So to begin with, make sure you take the right people, you know? Mm. Picking your team is absolutely key. A mm-hmm. uh, few people I wouldn't take it, uh, in our team, not going to lie. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Obviously, Jess, you're, you're spending such a long time in the car with people. You know, your heads are going to butt. You're not eating. You're breaking down. Like, there's frustrations and there's stress. Mm. So that inside the car is just a bomb waiting to go off, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. It's testing times. You need it's some laid-back yeah. people. It's the biggest, it's the biggest uh, decision you you can make. Um, is, that, w- is that good advice? That's that's all right, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Thank happy you. with that. So, <laughs> I just want to talk about something that you said to me the other day. Yeah. This is, I've been with Amy, we've been together 12 years. Right. This is the most profound thing you've ever said. Oh. And oh. you told me that you, you didn't hear this from anybody else. This was your own thoughts, mm. which I still don't believe. I haven't got a clue what you're about to say. <laughs> but you said, this is what Amy said to me. She said, what if we are supposed to live forever, but the air that we breathe is poisonous and is slowly killing us? Uh, well, I was just uh, looking into the, looking into it was actually the, the the pictures on your wall and I was daydreaming. She was in deep thought, full deep thought. And like that is the darkest and most intelligent thing I think you've ever said. So I mean, philosophical, babes. I wear glasses, Craig. I'm an intelligent woman. That's, that is, coming from you, I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded really bad. It could, I know, you cheeky shit. It could be a thing though, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like we are supposed to live forever. <laughs> But like slowly over time, until, you know, 80s, 90s, that is when the air finally gets to your bones and you die. Yeah. It's a thing to think about, Craig. But that's for another podcast completely, you know? (laughs) (laughs) All right. So before we kick into the podcast, we'd like to take the time to thank our very first sponsor for the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Reach (laughs) out. That's enough of that. So the first ever sponsor for this can is you, Babbel. Can you believe it? The language app. We've made it, Craig. We've got a sponsor on our podcast. Something we've wanted now for years. Unbelievable. We're, we're posh. We're, we're posh kids now. <laughs> <laughs> so have you ever wanted to learn a language, but you thought, I just haven't got enough time? Well, Babbel will literally get you speaking another language in a matter of weeks. Yeah, we've used Babbel for years now, and they were actually one of our sponsors on the Mongol Rally. So pretty fitting really you know yeah so just run through a few things that is class about the app so there's daily like 10 to 15 minute lessons you can actually download them which is what we did on the rally yeah that's good it's good that isn't it? well because it's mainly for travelers isn't it we're kind of like focusing on our audience which are travelers so you know if you go to like just say Colombia, i mean i don't know what their wi-fi is like but if it's rubbish you can download them in your hotel or your hostel and then go out on the road and learn them on the beach hmm which is a great idea. Top draw. Um, and the other good thing is that they teach you like real life conversations. Yeah. So, you know, on some apps, it's like that plant has got a dodgy pulse. I thought you were going to say a willy then. I don't know why. 
<laughs> Can you mind not to get a wee love? Well, that plant has got a willy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that I could see that being on another app. Do you know what I mean? It's just useless information. Yeah. yeah. So with Babble, it'll straight away. It's like, how do you order a coffee? Mm. It's, it's like brilliant. Things, things you need to know in everyday life. Yeah, like where is the toilet? Yeah. You know, useful stuff. <laughs> Definitely useful stuff for you. Remember, you, know. you had to learn that in was it was it Russia? How to ask to go to the toilet? Possibly. No, it might have been in in Indonesia. Was it? I can't remember, but remember you asked somebody and they took you back back into their house. Oh, yeah. Probably. It's probably happened a million times. I, I've got a, a bladder of a nan. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's super cool as well um, because it helps you improve with like your speech and the way you're saying things. And mm. if it isn't quite coming out correct, it'll tell you, you know? Yeah. So, so it really... You get the accent down, and we've we've tested it as well. It we'll is we'll, tried we'll and do it like an Indonesian. We'll speak Indone- Indonesian in like an Italian accent, and it, it recognizes that <laughs> it's really yeah. bad. <laughs> we have tested it, yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, the lessons are created by over a hundred language experts, um, and not by a translation machine, mm. which is also the worst when you're on a language app, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, how are you going to learn from a robot? Do you know what I mean? But you're le- you're doing so well, Craig. Like, cheers, Han. I'm pretty sure you're nearly fluent in Indonesian, right? <laughs> no, you. I mean, you are. I've been doing it for a long time, but like in my head, I'm amazing. But then when I come to like talk, to, like on the app, I f- can fly through it. But when yeah. I think about actually having a conversation, mm. like me and Nick were talking about this because my mate Nick's learning as well. Yeah, he was like, when you get there, people speak so fast. Yeah, I bet. so I'll be like, wait there, let me just get my pen and paper. <laughs> can you just uh, say that and uh, not point five slower? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just need. I think I know how to say. Can you speak more slowly? But um. Yeah, fab. I don't want to be put on the spot now. No, no, you're all right. What did you say to me yesterday, Sainsbury's? Um, her shoes are brown. I was like, oh, thank no, you. My, my, my shoes are a bit too big because so, my flip flops are too big. Suck some more. Suck some more. <laughs> so try Babbel today. Just go to babbel.co.uk or download the app for free. That's babbel, B A B B E L.co.uk or download the app to try it for free. Babbel, learn a language and make it your own. We got the time, Craig. Do you know what I mean? Especially now, isn't it? And it, yeah. <laughs> Chats. You ready to talk about the rally or what? A hundred percent. Give me what you got. Let's start off with a statement from the website about the rally. Okay. Your chances of being seriously injured or dying as a result of taking part are high. Individuals who have taken part in past adventurous adventures have been permanently disfigured, seriously disabled and even lost their life. You are on your own and you really are putting both your health and life at risk. Oh my God. Is that what it says? I'm glad we didn't read that before we signed up. Oh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's mad, isn't it? I was in the garden just now and I asked my mum how she felt about us doing the rally and she was like, I was just terrified. Oh, bless her. (laughs) No. She said I would watch the videos and be like, oh, he's okay. And I've just spoken to him. Yeah. And then she'd realise that the videos are like two weeks behind Mm. and she'd start freaking out. Yeah. I mean... Uh, yeah, I, they have to cover their backs, don't they? The adventurous. That's mm. the website. That's the guys that we went with to do the rally. Yeah. So first question, why did we do it? Why Why did you want to do it? I think when I, because we got a bit lost with where our YouTube content was going, we kind of started. Shit, wasn't it? For, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So um, when our friend Sam, like, we were having a coffee in the coffee shop and he just said about the Mongol rally and we, I think our, our hearts just lit up, didn't they? Mm. We just knew that, that the fire in our bellies came. We thought this challenge is everything we need. It's everything that sort of encompasses King in it. You know, we want to go out there. We want to travel differently. We want to inspire people to, you know, the Costa del Sol's lovely babes, but have you been to the beaches of Uzbekistan? Do you know what I mean? When do we go to the beach? Well, we, ne- well we never, <laughs> but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean you know inspiring people to go to different countries yeah. like Kyrgyzstan we couldn't even yeah, say that I know for the first like 20 days that we knew we were going there we didn't even plan to go there no we weren't planning on going there but yeah what we want people to take to take risks to see more of the world that you wouldn't necessarily see you know yeah makes you wiser we just wanted a proper challenge didn't we yeah and I think with this it it kind of films itself. So we're like, we want to make a documentary of this because yeah. we know it's going to be a crazy mm-hmm. time. Um, so yeah, as soon as we heard about it, we're like, it's happening. 
And we also, we knew that you had to raise money for charity and we had two charities that we really wanted to do it for. Yeah. So ours were Click Sergeant, which did a lot for you when you were going through your treatment. Yeah. So I was diagnosed with cancer when I was 17 and you kind of just, well, your whole world falls apart. Your family and everyone are just like, oh, right. Okay. You know, and Click Sergeant are the, they're a charity that sort of put you with somebody who can help you they talk you through everything a social worker came to our house she sat us down she said exactly what we were entitled to and how many families were going through this and she was our rock Mm. she was everything if we didn't have her i just i don't know how we would have survived through it you know she just made us so much more comfortable she made having cancer okay you know oh ledge oh and i just i can't imagine people being diagnosed with cancer, young, uh, young people and teenagers is is what who they support. A teenager being diagnosed with cancer and not having any support, mm. not having any help, not knowing that there's people around them that they can talk to, would ju- it ju- it just terrifies me that that would happen. So yeah, honestly, Click Sergeant are a fantastic charity. They do so much and they they save and help people with their lives. You know. Just, yeah, great charity doing great things. So we were stoked to be raising money for them. And also um, we chose Big Moose, which is a local charity run by our friends, Jeff and Chloe Smith, who just do incredible things. They they raise money for all different kinds of charities and they just put on these great events for like disabled children. They do a super try where they do, they set up a triathlon for disabled children so they can experience that, Mm -hmm. you know, sportsmanship. And they built a coffee shop to employ homeless people like, how amazing is that? I know. They are honestly the kindest and most hardworking people I think we know. Yeah. Absolutely. Super yeah. inspiring. So yeah. they were the charities that we chose. Um, so we decided to yeah raise money for them. One of the ways we did it was we did a selfie flag, didn't we? Oh, yeah. yeah. So we announced that we were going to do these t- raise money for these charities. And we said, everyone who follows us, if you want to put your face on a flag, we'll stick it on the car. Yeah. Take and, you uh, through all the countries. Yeah. You know? That was amazing. That was a great way. So if you're going to do it, that's a great way of raising money. Yeah. Do a little selfie flag. Yeah, for sure. If you can remember, what did you expect a rally to be like? Well, we'd watch a lot of um, this guy called Tanner. He's an American guy. He did it the year before and he was like the only one really with vlogs on Mm. YouTube about the rally. So we just sat and watched them all, didn't we? Mm. And I think every time we watched them, we were like, let's go, Uh, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I'm (laughs) sorry. Yes, please. How did you know which one to press? I just press anything and hope for (laughs) the best. I wanted this one. Reach (laughs) out. But yeah. Shout out to my mate Scammer for those sound effects as well. Thanks, yeah, mate. if you love like drum and bass, if you love garage music, hip hip-hop. hop, he's got his own. Ah, oh, he's second. Yeah, he's the boy. Um, but yeah, no, I just couldn't wait to get on it. I just think we knew that this was our kind of adventure. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know what to expect, but because we never we never overlanded before, have yeah, had we? We'd no. done like road trips through Europe, which is easy, mm-hmm. like the border crossing is literally like, oh, I'm now in Germany. Yeah. And there's no stops. But for me, I think the border crossings were like the scariest bit. I don't know why. I think because you see them on like movies, don't you? And like yeah. whenever people are going through borders, there's people with massive rifles. and Which they were. Which they were. Yeah, yeah. there was. <laughs> and you expect to get like shaken down, which we did. Yeah. So I think that was the, the thing I was a bit more like, mm. oh God, that's going to be terrifying. Yeah. And I think we had like reservations about Iran because, you know, it's not the normal place to go on your holidays and yeah. you tell you tell people and they're like holy shit you're going to iran yeah, I told is my it mom. safe she like, nearly had a heart attack yeah do you know what i mean but it's been it's been like what's vilified the vilified in the media, in the media for mm. sure but yeah like iran even like a few days before we were due to go in my anxiety started like just in anticipation for what we were gonna encounter mm. but apart from that i was ready yeah yeah, yeah. Maybe I didn't know what to pack. You know, that's usually my my only problem. Indecisive, what do I pack? You overpacked though, didn't you? No, Snuck didn't. an extra bag in. Nah, nah. I was like, right, we'll have you'll have one backpack mm. and one big backpack, and that's it. Amy brought about four. One was for accessories. Literally. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> um, looking at our, our, our and I always say ah, looking at our announcement video. That's just because you're common, babes. Don't worry about it. Looking at our announcement video, we look really young and in, innocent. Celebrities. I think since then we've we've weathered and we look very aged now. Speak for yourself, love. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, it, yeah if you're going to do it. The years haven't been good to us. No, they? no. I mean, we did a lot <laughs> last year. Yeah, I think the rally, after the rally in India, I've put on about 10 years. I've, I've gone twice as great since doing them. We always said we'd get a facial after coming out of that desert as well. Remember all the like oh, sand shit and, and dirt sand, going yeah. in our pores and that? We never did. And it looks like it. Oh, so man. maybe, you know, we'll hit the salons when they're open. Right, first things first then. Yeah. We needed a team. And I don't know how it came about. I was going to the pub a lot of the time because it was some sort of football on. Oh, you proper hooligan, you, yeah. I'm Sandland to like die. I don't support Sandland. <laughs> it's just a funny song, isn't it? <laughs> For me, Will and Jess, you Will... You have a blowing bubbles, Craig. That's where I stand, isn't it? I don't know. Millwall. What? <laughs> you just naming random teams? <laughs> I love the football factory, by the way, guys. If you haven't watched that, bring it on. Cheers, Clive. <laughs> So yeah, me, Will and Jess are going to the pub. Will's my oldest friend. I've known Will since I was three. So I've known Will for 30 years. I'm not sure how you stayed friends with him for that long, to be honest. <laughs> oh, <I> savage. Mean... <laughs> now, Will's the life of the party. Um, and so, yeah, we were at the pub and I was like, Jess, fancy doing the rally? Will, do you fancy doing the rally? They're like, yeah, why not? And then... But that's our mates, isn't it? Yeah. We, I think you attract how you are and they're super laid back. Yeah. And they're just like, yeah, go on then. Give it a go. And we'd actually, we took a trip with Will to Bali, didn't we? As like a little tester. Mm. And we got on great. We were doing scooter rides everywhere. Yeah. And traveling chill. about. So we were like, Will's going to be great on the rally. Yeah. Um, but we'll talk about that later how, on. How wrong we were. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next thing that we needed was a car. Most people, um, you know, do a bit of research. We were so keen that we ended up buying the car in February. We were going in July, mate. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember that, well... We, we bought a Fiat Panda. That's what we decided on. Of course we did. And I think the only reason why was Amy did some research and found out that they've got air conditioning. That's not true. <laughs> yes, it that is. That is not true. You're like, oh, it's silver and it's got air con. <laughs> I knew we would need it and it was an absolute lifesaver, but we did get like judged because of it, didn't we? Oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> now, most people, they choose like Japanese cars. Like most people pick Nissans because it's easier to get parts. So when you're stranded in the back end of nowhere, they've got all the, the Japanese parts somehow. Mm-hmm. So how was I supposed to know that? I mean... Have a look at me now, looking at me. Do I look like a mechanic? Do I look like I know what a, what a car does inside? If you, if you were a mechanic, I'd come to your garage, love. Thanks, babes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we decided on a, an Italian number, didn't we? Is she Italian? Fiat is Italian, oh, isn't it? okay. Um, and the car was actually supposed to cost less than five hundred pound. That was one of the rules. But okay. we're rebels, so Explain we were just that. like six fifty. Break the first rule. Didn't tell him that, but no, we didn't mention that. Um, and then a few weeks later, <laughs> no, but we rocked up, didn't we? Go on. So we looked on Gumtree, I think, and I was like, "Oh, cute little one there. She got a little, you know, the little things for a roof rack." So I was already thinking ahead, Craig. Mm. Um, and then we rocked up, and I was like, "Oh." It's tiny. I don't know why I thought it was going to be like a small Jeep, but it definitely <laughs> yeah. wasn't. No, it wasn't. There was basically no boot. And I was like, oh. <laughs> it was bad news. I, the other thing my mum said was, the other thing I thought was, how are you all going to fit in that car? Yeah. Well, remember when Will first got in and his knees like were by his boobs because he had to lift them. <laughs> by his boobs? So we had to like move the front chair like Will all is the not way forwards. Morb- morbidly obese. No, but he's got boobs, so hasn't he? Pecs, mate. Do you not call... Oh, right. <laughs> Men right. don't have boobs. Okay, fine. It's pecs. <laughs> Moobies. Buy his moobies. I uh, don't know if you remember this, though, um, but a few weeks after buying the car, mm. the uh, warning light on the dashboard came oh, on, yeah. saying engine failure That's whilst we right. were driving. Oh, my God, yeah. Four months before, five months before we'd even set off on the <laughs> we rally. We were in fits of laughter, weren't we? I mean, it could have gone either way. Like, we weren't, we were fuming. No, I think I remember being like, it can only happen to us. <laughs> <laughs> it turned out it was just a loose spark plug. Um, so oh, I saw my brother and he said, every time people come in the garage, they're like, they always say, oh, I think it's a loose wire. And he said, it never happens. Mm. But it was just a plug that had come out. So he popped it back it in. It actually was. That is our, that is. is our mechanical knowledge. We, ha- we had no idea just to pop the... Engine failure. We need a new car. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, Terry. Little... <laughs> 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 oh, okay. So now we've got a car, we've got the team. We needed a route. Mm. Um, so if you're going to do it, it's point A and point B. You, you literally can go wh- whatever way you want. 
Yeah. You can get you can ship your car to America and drive it backwards if you want. Yeah. Can you? Is that a you thing? can absolutely do it. Yeah, you are on your own with how you want to do it, and it's not necessarily a race, is it? No. The, I mean, they say if you come first, you just get the pride of coming first. What was that mental fact about that team? Who they literally they took it in turns to sleep, and they they drove oh, constantly. They got there in like, and they did it in like fifty six hours or something. Yeah, it was like four days or something ridiculous, wasn't it? What is the point of that? No point at whatsoever, Craig. Who? What part of the world are you see in? Nothing. What a waste. What a waste of money. Massive waste. It, how much did it cost to sign up? 600 and... 525, I think. Oh, was it? I think so. Bargain. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, don't do that because no. you're going to miss a lot. Yeah, obviously take your time. You know, you want to you want to get it into a certain amount of time though because the adventurists who put on the Mongol Rally, for a start, they put on a, um, a leave-in party you know, Mm. before everybody goes, which we'll talk about. And then there is a party on the way and then there's closing parties, like finish line parties. I think there was three or four. And the fourth one we were aiming to get to, which is like, it gave us like 72 days or something. Yeah, we wanted to basically, what you're trying to say is we were trying to get there for the last party. Yeah, because we wanted to spend as much time as we could going Mm. through these countries and like really experiencing them a little bit, you know? Yeah, exactly. So... On our route, we decided to kind of go south of the Caspian Sea, so through Turkey, and then we met our convoy uh, at the Armenia, yeah. uh, Armenian Georgia. border, Armenian, Georgia, Georgia, Armenia. Yeah. <laughs> our geography is so bad. I know. So we did all of Europe: Hungary, Slovakia, you know, and then we got down to Turkey. Slovakia went to Slovenia, wasn't it? No, it was Slovakia. Slovakia um and then yeah through Turkey which was lovely you know we did Cappadocia we saw all the balloons went through Istanbul which was a nightmare remember the traffic yeah it was crazy and then yeah so we you know we managed to stop for a few days here and there we gave ourselves more time in Turkey to stop but you will not understand the amount of time you are spending in that car madness it is incredible like at least seven hours a day yeah. Because you have to go. You have to be on the road all the time to be able to hit. You know, you are doing a third of the world's surface. Mm. And you have to be in Russia for that date. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah. So route planning is quite key because you've got to factor in, like, will I possibly break down mm-hmm. I know, you're in a stand? It up, yeah. And will I need two or three days? So the toughest part was figuring out when we were going to be in certain places. Yeah. What visas we needed mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Yeah. And for people that are listening that are thinking about doing the rally the way we did that was we just went on to google maps mm. we put in our start line and then we put put in the end and then we figured out like well how... we couldn't go that far could we so we had to oh, literally we, could actually, we yeah. were doing it in sections mm. but we figured out like how long it might take us to get from you know turkey to the end of turkey and then we figured out how many days that was if we needed to give ourselves a day extra you know we just put as much time in extra as we could mm to get it sorted yeah yeah it was a big task big task so in deciding the route we decided on Iran didn't we because we were buzzing to go there because we'd heard good things yeah um so because we wanted to go there because we're from the UK they don't allow you to go in Uh -uh. in case they think you're a spy yeah so we had to get an actual guide so we found this company called Overland to Iran so if you're going to do it go through them because they were brilliant yeah it worked fine apart from Um, But yeah, we had a bit of trouble. So bearing in mind, the, the rally hasn't even started yet. We've had an engine failure yeah. and uh, we got accused of being terrorists by our bank. Oh, Craig. <laughs> like, that's not even a joke. They, they called us up and they were like, we think you've been involved in terrorist activities. Because we sent money to pay for our guide <laughs> yeah. to Iran. That's exactly why. I don't think we even told people this before. This is no, we this is a uh, brand new news for some of you. Reach out. A brand new podcast exclusive. Just a spontaneous beatbox. Yeah, getting kicked out of Barclays Bank. So there's that. Yeah, so um, we had to have. I had to have, have an interview for like an hour, yeah. and they were like, "What were you doing?" Blah blah blah, and they, and they were so cold. They were just like, "No, you're getting kicked out." Yeah, we had to open a new. We opened yeah. a new bank account. And it everything. was stress, Craig. Yeah, and so they eventually called us up, and they were like, oh, we understand that this really nice woman." Mm. And we got let back in with with like under quid or something. I think the reason it happened was because we tried to pay and it got rejected. No, no, that's what it was. We paid too much. 
And the Iranian people said, oh, no, you've paid too much. And they wanted to send it back to us. Ah, okay. That's yeah. why it was all dodgy. But then we had to send some money to Marcus in Germany and then he paid it from Germany. So they're like, why Who's are you... Marcus? It, it was just a guy, f- on one of the guys convoy. on the convoy, yeah. So we paid money to him in Germany and then he went to Iran and then he came back. So they were like this triangle. Yeah, yeah. They're like, why are you I mean, sending no money to Germany and Iran? <laughs> but yeah, we're not terrorists for the record. No. And neither do we fund it or condone it. it. at all, no. <laughs> just in case you thought we might. So yeah, with the with the route planning, the, we've, we heard that on the previous valleys, people had got somewhere like a day before and their visas were like five days out and they were getting stuck in no mm-hmm. man's land. Yeah. Literally, so no man's land is the between the borders. So they w- there was no shops, no, they would just had water from yeah. the guards and a few like snacks. Yeah, because you, 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 you cross the border, so you come out of one country and if you're not like let into the next country because you don't have your visa dates right, you can't go back into that country you've just came out of. You are stuck literally in between the two borders in, in a small stretch of land until your visa either comes into play yeah yeah then we didn't want that happening so we had to at all we did actually really well planning ours we did amazing we saw people camping in no man's land with tents and stuff that's not where you want to be in a hot country especially definitely not um so also what we realized when we were planning the routes we were like oh yeah wicked we'll go through this border and we were like doing the research finding the borders and then like finding out from our convoy, they were like, oh, those borders have been closed for like 10 years. Yeah. So we're like, oh, okay, we'll just replan the route. Yeah. Because our route changed about three or four times, didn't it? Yeah. But if, you, if you're going to do the rally, there is a Facebook group that you should join. And if you've got any questions, ask in there. And they're more than likely the other people that are doing the routes or a similar route to you will have the answers. Mm. Yeah. So now that we had the route, we had to sort the visas, which was one of the most expensive things on the rally. And because we're last minute fellas, oh, we course. stupidly decided to take a trip to Bali for like a month. Mm-hmm. And then so we ran out of time and we had to fast track all of them. <laughs> Bought the car in February. <laughs> Got the visas like a week before. Yeah. So yeah, express, express delivery, which was expensive. Don't, mm. don't leave it too late, honestly. So we had to get Russia, Iran and Mongolia um, all in one fell swoop. Mm-hmm. Um, but we had to rush, we were rushing the Russian visa as well. Because I don't yeah. know if you remember this, but back in March 2018, there was a double agent who worked for the UK's intelligence service and his daughter who got poisoned. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. So we were like, right, we need to get a Russian visa in case they're just like, no, you, you're from the UK, you can't, you can't come. come in, yeah, So we were yeah. like, we got to get up there. Sure, God. It was all, it's so much drama before you even got there. Yeah, yeah. So we had to go to London to get those three visas. Yeah. And while we were up there, we, we were nominated for an award, weren't we, Craig? Just another day in the office, like you know our I mean? one and only award. That, well, we actually did win and it was Travel Influencer. Travel Influencers of the Year 2018. We're buzzing. We yeah. were super shocked. We were. And we uh, buggered up the speech, didn't we? Oh, it was a shambles. That's because we just didn't have them planned, you know what I mean? We're modest. We didn't think we were going to win. Well, it wasn't just that. You, you just threw me under the bus, no, didn't you? No, I mean, you can keep saying this all you want. I did not. So Amy did a little speech and then... Made everyone laugh, you know, talked about yeah. diarrhea a bit, talked about sunburn. I can't remember what I said. It was just like a little blur. Bearing in mind, like, public speaking is my biggest fear. It's not, I'm not the best either. You were great at it. And so then we'd agreed before, because on our vlogs, we go, one, two, three, bite. So we said, oh, we'll finish the speech by doing that. Mm-hmm. So she passed me the mic and I went, oh, thanks so much, everyone. One, two, three. And then I went like that to Amy, looked at her and she went, um, and everyone just burst out laughing. I think it was because, Craig, I had said wow. so much, you know, I had the crowd going, I had a meeting, yeah, I had a palm in my great hand. Time. And then I come to you and I wanted you to say something. I didn't want you to go off the stage. I wanted and the go, floor to swallow me up. I didn't want you to come off the stage and go, oh, I wish I'd said something more. So I, I wish gave it was you the opportunity. On <laughs> so they were like this for Amy. <laughs> and then I come on and I was like, <laughs> dead silence but anyway stop it whilst we were there because we had to go to this award ceremony this is why it's a, a crucial bit of information mm. we w- were supposed to pick up our passports but we didn't have enough time for the iran visas yeah so we met this fellow named felix didn't uh, we? i just befriended him whether he wanted to be my friend or not he was going to be so my friend him. and i was like oh excuse me love uh, are you doing the Mongol rally? He looked like the type. Do you know what I mean? Um, and he was like, uh, yes, actually, I am. He was from Lithuania. 
and we got chatting and I was like, any chance when you go and pick your passport up tonight, can you pick ours up? And he was like, yeah, no problem. Yeah. I was like, I love you. Because <laughs> we had to go back because I had to put my extensions in, do you know what I mean? I had to get ready for the, for the awards. So yeah, he did it for us and we went and met him the next day and picked up our passports and it was fab. Yeah, so we didn't run off with them and sell them on the black market. So that's Felix, mm. who is a, a champion of the world and helped us out big time. He is. And also, we thought we were nuts doing the rally. Mm -hmm. He was doing it on a 50cc scooter, mate, on his own. I'm not even sure how we made it. He was in front of us. He was like, literally, it's like, we, <laughs> imagine getting a push bike and putting a hairdryer on it. <laughs> that was Felix across the planet. <laughs> And we, when we bumped into him, he was in front of us. Yeah, he was taking <laughs> over us. He was so slow. We didn't say the name of our car. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's coming, isn't it? Go on. What, what, what did we name the car? Um, so, Fiat Panda, Ferranda, babes. Do you know what I mean? Oh, is that even mad? Panda, Ferranda. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, we had the team, we had the car, we, we were slowly sorting our visas. And whilst this has all kind of happened at the same time, when it? it was like a mad six months. Yeah. Um, but we needed to get sponsors on board because I, I don't know if you remember, but at the time we were skint. Oh, I mean, when are we not skint, Craig? Please tell me that. <laughs> well, not anymore. We got a sponsor. Reach <laughs> out. Um, so yeah, we'd never done this before, had we? We'd reached out to companies. We tend tended to in the past when we would work with people, it'd be like tourist boards or, yeah. you know, we would kind of get activities in exchange for content, mm -hmm. but we'd never like pitched so an many. idea so this was like a game changer for us mm. it was a slow start yeah, wasn't it yeah. it was just like local companies and, and stuff first yeah um we actually decided to dress up in suits and go to halfords at one point can you remember though <laughs> it was like a running joke wasn't it it was like oh. what were you doing when you were 30 just wearing my dad's suits going to halfords trying to get a sponsor trying to get a free tent <laughs> Free tent. <laughs> yeah. Show me, can we have a tent? No. N no, you can't. No. Get out. So, yeah, that was good fun. But that's all <laughs> in the vlogs, though, isn't it? That was yeah. hilarious. I was ready for it, though, because I, you know, I thought I looked smart. What did I, whose suit did I have on? My dad's. It was massive. Yeah. <laughs> they must have thought we were crackers. And or I something. had a clipboard or something, so I looked a bit more pro professional. Um, <laughs> and I'm not you sure. did as well. No, no, no. Why did you have the clipboard? Professionalism. <laughs> And yeah, they just weren't having any of it, really. But yeah, uh, I mean, we did really well with sponsors um, mm. because we had a following then, you know? Yeah. We had something to offer our sponsors in return um, for what they were going to give us. It is a lot harder if you don't have a YouTube channel or like a a big following yeah. to secure them, you know? Yeah, but it's also definitely possible i think anything that's like charity based and, and, yeah. and amazing to watch mm -hmm. companies will eat it up and that's what we found is like even though it was a slow start mm -hmm. it what i would say is if you're going to do anything like filming wise come up with an amazing idea and just pitch it to companies because they can't say no to it that's really. it yeah because we had a great like we had a press release which was like super like click sergeant helped us do that and we had like we were in the newspaper and we had a really good template email to send our sponsors mm. It, it was worded so well that, yeah, I, we felt like they couldn't say no, you know. Can you blow on your own trumpet? Well, I'm saying that because we've actually, I, I've written a blog post about you? how to do the manga. You're a writer as well. Yeah. You're so talented, oh, yeah. babes. I'm just lifting up my glasses a second. Um, <laughs> and on there, I've put that we've got like so much stuff that we accumulated while we were, you know, the templates of the car where we'd... Made it up completely. Yeah, Didn't have a clue what we were doing. We sectioned out the car and we put prices on the bonnet, prices on the side, you know, sent these to companies and said, pick which one you want. We were literally making it up though. Like we, we were like, how much for that bit? How much for that bit? Yeah, we were just, just putting oh, prices 250, on 250 quid. Yeah. yeah. We were like a pair of Dell boys just <laughs> trying to flog panels of the car. Definitely. I, I love a good car boot sale, me. So yeah, we, we ended up with about five grand in the pot, I think. Possibly, that's a guess. It was so long ago. We are spoiled. Yeah. Tarts, Craig. Mad. So we wanted a pot for breakdowns, petrol. Mm -hmm. uh, breakdowns and petrol. That's I all think that covered. Was it. Yeah. 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 Um, and we also got super lucky and ended up with a bunch of camping gear. Um, sporks are a must if you're doing the rally. Found mine the other day. A communal spork. I could probably throw it out now. I think it's still like food on it from the rally. They were minging, like the literally <laughs> to clean it, we were just like. <laughs> Yeah, next Done. person. Yeah, so <laughs> disgusting. A few noodles, love. There you go. <laughs> uh, and also, um, just to mention it now, just to get it out there, mm. the elephant in the room, we're vegan. Oh, shit. You're going to go there, yeah. 
Oh, you've said it now. Of course you have. So that on the I rally knew we were was get through this extremely podcast tough. You I'm a vegan. Did you know? Vegan? Are you vegan? I'm like a I'm like a 89 percent vegan. What? Well, there's these shoes that I want, but they're leather. ridiculous. I'm like, you want to wear dead cows on your feet, and she's like, yeah, why not? Fashion. All right, moving on. Oh, moving on. <laughs> 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 Um, <laughs> Am I a dad now? Have I got a kid? That was like a proper dad joke. It was. <laughs> that was a good one for you. So in total, it was like six months prep um, from sorting the route, rewriting about six times. Um, and to put the icing on the cake, mm. we had the car. We got it wrapped in orange camouflage, yeah. which was insane. So we had um, someone was going to sponsor the car and they pulled out last minute. So our mate Phil stepped in. I will never in. forgive you. Our mate Phil stepped in from Specialist Cars and uh, the boys wrapped the car and then we put all the sponsors on it. We actually took an Ikea drawer from under my bed, sprayed it black. Yeah. That was our roof rack. That's right. <laughs> Keeping it cheap, Craig. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And then um, how did we find our mascot? Oh, the mascot. <laughs> so, I mean, if, you haven't, if you're new here, well, welcome to begin with because we never said that. We had a mascot. When people do the rally, they they go all out, you know. They want their cars to be super, like, eccentric looking. They want to really stand out on the road so that their sponsors show up and, you know, people can find their socials and things. So, yeah, we chose orange cam- camouflage. And um, we decided, well, I decided, because I saw that my friend, mutual friend of mine and Craig's, Becky, she was selling, because it was just after Christmas, this mechanical, like, what, two-foot dinosaur? <laughs> yeah. Um, And it, it roared mechanical dinosaur yeah yeah mechanical and it moved his head so we called him andre 1000 bc um and he was brilliant and he just fit at the front of our car and that was it it was lovely no it wasn't end of story no it wasn't (laughs) tell him the real story so we go to her house bearing in mind marnie's what two at the time marnie's her daughter who who the dinosaur technically topsy belonged to Mm. So we go to the house. Uh, she had no idea. Marnie's unaware that she's going to lose her best friend forever. Oh, stop the BFF. It, <laughs> <laughs> her mum bought it for Christmas and she's like, I need it out of the house. It's massive. She doesn't sit on it. It's fine. Like, just take it. Becky, you've got too much money spending that on a dinosaur. Yeah, I think it was like 250 and we bought it off her for £100. You're mad buying it for that. I mean, it was a great mascot. So anyway, we get to the house. Amy snatches the dinosaur out of Marnie's no, hands. No, I never. She bursts into tears. <laughs> Like, literally throws her head back. She's like, <sighs> Stop it, Craig. Becky can't stop laughing <laughs> because she just finds it so funny that Amy feels so guilty. I'm like, oh, Beck, honestly, sh- shall I leave it? And she's like, oh, my God, no, do not leave it in here. Like, it's too big for the house. She's like, please, just take it. Like, don't worry about it. And then she's laughing. And I, Manny's like screaming. She's like holding her hands out, like reaching for this dinosaur. And I'm like, I can't do this. She's two years old. I'm making a two-year-old literally howl down the house. You traumatised her. I think I did. And the worst part was once she'd gone back in the house, we could still hear her crying. Um, we saw her in the window. She literally like scraped down the window with her hand like to do on the films <laughs> and just threw her head, looked away and was like, ah, <laughs> like, see you never, Topsy. I love you. I felt so bad. So, yeah, we got ourselves a mascot. Which ended up getting decapitated, but we'll talk about that in in, in, the, in the next few yeah. podcasts. So yeah, we were we were buzzing, weren't we? The car looked amazing. Sensational. Like I think the idea with the rally is that you make a car look ridiculous um, and so tacky that it looks good. Yeah. But like so many people, are like oh, your car looks wicked. We do tacky so well, Craig. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen Ask Olympics? Yeah. Our new eighties game show. For that sure. is like tacky, classy. <laughs> I think that's how you would describe yeah. what we do. Yeah. So yeah, we were all set. Like July rolled around. We packed our bags. We were so buzzing so to go. Ready. Like everything was in place. We had all of our visas sorted. It's massive though, isn't it? Yeah. Like if you think about it. Yeah, it's huge. You just, you, you pay to have your car put in and then you do what you've got to do to get it sorted and yeah. you go. Yeah. And if there's anyone out there thinking, oh, I couldn't possibly do that. Mm please just do it just to like take the plunge yeah just to prove it to yourself that things like this can be done by you yeah. you know what i mean yeah if you believe in yourself you can do anything and i know obviously the mongol rally isn't like world peace but it was <laughs> no you know it, it was, was a life-changing trip though you 100%. know you get to see so many cultures in such a short yeah. time and massive trip. it's just you learn so much about yourself and yeah. your patience and mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. it's a real um personality builder isn't it yeah 
So yeah, Will and Jess were actually going to meet us in Prague because uh, they had a few like work commitments and stuff. And so we had like two weeks to cruise to the start line. Yeah. Started off quite well. Europe was like a breeze, wasn't it? Fantastic. So yeah. we had, yeah, two weeks of just eating, seeing the sights, going to German castles. Yeah. So yeah, we were doing all this, but just in a weird car. Mm. Um, <laughs> so we'd been in talks with a company about sponsoring a few videos uh, before the rally. Through Europe, yeah. But they didn't want to be associated with the rally at all because it's too dangerous. Yeah. I mean, it's understandable, you know? <laughs> yeah. We're about to take on half the world, so... So we ended up filming four videos of our journey to the start line, um, which we, and we couldn't show the car. So everyone who was watching was so confused because we built the rally up for ages. And yeah. they're like, are you not doing the rally? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what we did is when we edited the first Mongo Rally episode, when we got to the start line, we had to put all the things that went wrong, yeah. which wasn't that many, but we had a stinker. Stinker. In Cologne, didn't we? In Germany, yeah. We weren't even that far from home. We weren't even that close to the start line. And the car just started clucking didn't it clucking <laughs> 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 that's what the car sounded like no we need a chicken one <laughs> chicken one but no cluck cluck clucking chugging 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 that's the one yeah got there in the end so yeah we were in cologne driving down the street luckily we weren't far from our hotel but the car just started rocking back and forth and i was like oh dear this is not good we couldn't start it then could we couldn't start it i was like ringing my mate you phoned your dad yeah we were like checking fuses like Literally no idea. Yeah. We, we had a toolbox, which is like four spanners. No tow bar. <laughs> Did you get off your mum? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you think, oh, I don't know anything about cars, couldn't do the rally. Honestly, you are looking at or <laughs> listening to two of the most like uneducated <laughs> mechanical people to ever live, honestly. I only We've had that car for a year. We've got a Yaris now. We've had it for a year. I, I only found out where to put the water about two days oh, ago. Did you? Well done. <laughs> You don't even know. She's you. been running dry for ages. That car, she must hate us. But yeah, Will kicked the tyre when he saw her. It was like decent. So like yeah. literally all of us, not a jar of Yeah, glue. not a Scooby-Doo. So yeah, we ended up having to push the car back down a one-way street. Yeah. Uh, and luckily we had been learning a bit of babble. So That's right, I, I was yeah. like, how do you, I've forgotten how you say it now. Via, via sin turista. I was like, sorry, we are tourists. We're tourists. And everyone was just like looking at me. The like, lux though. One, you're kill. German shit. And two, why have you got that stupid car? Yeah. And why are you going the wrong way? Yeah. But yeah, got it, got it to the garage next morning. Oh. How much was it? 500 euros for a brand new fuel pump. So the fuel pump had gone. Bloody fuel pump. Teddy, what are you doing, son? Playing Selling that. us a car with the with the bad fuel pump. Fuming. So yeah, that was our first chunk of the pot gone. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. We didn't even get to the start line. And... But it could have been worse. It could have happened somewhere where they couldn't have sourced the part, but it happened right. in Germany. That's so. right. Yeah, she. you know, it happened in Germany. She's an Italian car. <laughs> Close enough, like. You know, they're quite efficient, though, Germans, and they when it comes to fixing stuff. Yeah. So Europe was just wicked, wasn't it? We were still yeah. buzzing with anticipation, like, what are all the other cars going to look like? What's the start line going to be like? Mm -hmm. And we just couldn't wait to see Will and Jess as well, because yeah. we, you know, they'd been seeing our updates and stuff, and they were flying out. Yeah. And it was just, yeah, it was so exciting. Just, just we knew it was just the beginning of what was going to be one of our best trips ever, didn't we? Mm. That's why it was so exciting. And we didn't know where it would take us. So yeah, we ended up meeting Will and Jess in Prague uh, on the 15th of July, which was the, the, day, the day before the launch. So I think we camped like just outside of the city. It was like this little river and we... No, we got a place with bedbugs, didn't we? No. That oh, was that was later. Budapest. <laughs> I don't know what day it is, do you? Oh, mate. We camped, did we? We camped, yeah. Oh, number one tip. Here we go. Tips. Oh, tips. Remember we said we were going to have tips? Absolutely. Inside. Here's your first insider tip. <laughs> if you're going to do the rally... Get yourself a pop-up tent, Pop-up mate. tent is the only way. Honestly, some of the boys in the rally had... I don't know why. I don't know, Aiden, Ollie and Sam. I mean, I thought they were smart guys. I thought you were smart. Sure. They literally had about 46 poles, yeah. 200 pegs, <laughs> eight sheets. It was like an army barracks. Yeah, yeah. And we were just like, pop, literally, like we through the it. tent. And it was just done. flick it and it'd open. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. It was a life changer. However, they're not waterproof, so... Uh, yeah, it won't work, but we won't talk about that. We did bit. find that out the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we got... Uh, we stepped there, and then the next day, we actually drove to the start line. Yeah. Um, so, we had there was, like, a check-in point. Mm. And and for the adventurers, they send you a text message oh, with yeah. coordinates. Mm. 
for the field in which the launch party is. Yeah. And I don't know. I didn't expect much of it at all. No. Like I knew from past play, from past rallies what had, what happened in the launch parties and everything. And but I was blown away. It, it was, was incredible. unbelievable. They went all out. They must have spent so much money because mm. we did spend quite a long time slagging off the adventurers. Like they make so much money. Yeah. And they send you off, and you. They don't help you. Yeah. You've got nothing then. Cashing in. They're Genius. absolutely winning. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I think they do put a lot of that money into the starting parties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 100%. I've forgotten the guy's name, the guy who like started the whole thing. Just say his name's Dave. All right. Dave is, he, Dave actually did the first ever rally yeah. on his own in a Fiat Panda. So was he, that Panda? Yeah. It was a Fiat Panda, yeah. one of the old school ones. Amazing. So he did the drive from London to Mongolia. Yeah. Um, so he was there and he was like on the microphone and stuff. But yeah, so let's set the scene. Yeah. So there was like, it, it was, was Mad, Mad Max, Max. themed. Yeah, yeah. So there was like piles of like crushed cars. There was like mud pits for mud wrestling. There was yeah. like casinos. All the staff were dressed in like Mad Max, Mad Max gear. Yeah, there like was leather like leather and, you know, covered faces and like big aviator hats and stuff. Yeah. Um, what they call it? Like flo- face paint and yeah. I yeah, got was... my face painted on my own because nobody would come with me. <laughs> and then I lost everyone because I went off on my own. <laughs> you did get lost, but it was huge as well. It was like, yeah, there was no showers and that we'd get used to that pretty soon. Yeah. Um, Who cares? But there was toilets there and yeah. And they had Mongolia wrestlers there. And, Which was amazing. Yeah. So there was like a whole bunch of events that happened. And... Yeah. And one of them I remember is, um, because there were so many Nissan Micras and there oh, were yeah. so many Fiat Pandas, they were like, all right, if you own a Nissan or a Fiat, come forward. We're going to do a tug of war. Yeah, it yeah. It was a massive it tug was of crazy. war. I won't lie. Fiat Pandas did lose to the yeah, Nissan yeah. Micras, but Set yeah. The tone that, and they it? also like did one of how many people they can fit in a Nissan Micra. Oh, yeah. I don't know what the score was, but the, the pictures were hilarious. It was just such a good buzz. Like, everyone was there. We, we met our convoy as well. That's right. So it was the first time we were meeting the boys who we were going to go through a run with. So I met them on Facebook. Basically, you join the Mongol Rally Facebook page, and then if people are doing a run, they put in, right, I'm starting a WhatsApp group. We're going through a run on this date. So, mm. I, so initially, I had... I had um, joined one and the main guy's name was Dan so I was just figuring out everything and I then I decided actually they're going through too early for us we don't want to go through so early so I changed whatsapp groups to one with Ollie so glad you did and that and I honestly we couldn't no have asked to the other ones, but... for a better but we met that Dan when we were getting our Iran visas we okay. saw him up in London but yeah Best decision ever. We've made friends for life. Um, we're actually Skyping them this weekend because it's my birthday. <laughs> we're going to have a fancy dress Zoom quiz. But yeah, oh, I'm just so happy. What were we talking about? The starting line. So it, it was we basically, yeah, we met the boys and it was just a big piss up. It was so hot as well. It was like the middle of summer. Yeah. So everyone got drunk. Uh, and they had was like fireworks and all kinds. And then Fire the next day, and dancers, oh, yeah. and there was ba- there was a massive bar everywhere. You know, there was a few bars, and it was just the perfect start, I think, to get to know everyone. It was and... great, yeah. So yeah, so that was us at the start line in our car with our team, oh, with our convoy. <gasps> so that is it. We've made it. Six. We've just done six months for you. Yeah. In less than an hour. Wow. Giving you all of our tips, and now we're at the start line. I mean, we didn't give that many tips out, but what we Pop did was, was golden. <laughs> yeah. It was golden. So that is it. So on the next episode, we're going to be talking about setting off on the trip of a lifetime with 500 other cars. Yeah, it was a record that year. Was it? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Um, apparently, they said 2018 was the best year ever. Did they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really true. Definitely. We're also going to talk about the dynamics in the car. And how we had one of the worst starts ever as a team. Of course, Chocolate Teapot did have a very bad start. Yeah, we forgot to mention that. We were team king in it. Um, and then later down the line, we were also known as team Chocolate Teapot. <laughs> um, and also, we're just going to be talking about uh, how hard we got hit in the face with the reality of what we were actually doing. Mm-hmm. So well, that's it. Emotional roller coaster. It was. I can't wait to delve in, you know. I know, because that's like, yeah, this is like all the the formalities out of the way. Yeah. And then the next one, we're just going to be diving into all the yeah. the shitstorm. So yeah, if you're doing the rally, you you listen to this, this because you're thinking about doing the rally, give me a ring. Um, I do charge my time. I'm quite expensive. <laughs> but you know, if you've got questions, I am a guru of the rally. I mean, I've done she it. Thinks she thinks she, she, you should have seen her on the phone. She was loving it. Hello. All right, love. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, you're talking to the boy. 
<laughs> being a done that, I've got the t shirt, which Literally. I actually have, and the headband, actually, which I wear sometimes when I do my gym classes. <laughs> I look ridiculous because it's lime green. But yeah, um, just ask me. But yeah, there's a lot to know. Mm. So we're going to leave the documentary. Uh, and the vlogs links in the description if you're on YouTube uh, and on Apple Podcasts you can see them in the description as well um, also Amy's little blog post as she mentioned we're going to put in the description as well don't belittle it by calling it little Amy's fantastic blog post that she's written it does say in there that I do charge for like templates and stuff and uh, I'm sticking with that one yeah you should I need a you new, worked hard I need then. a new weave so <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you know, like four people have come to me and I've gone, oh, don't worry, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna charge you any money for it. But I, uh, yeah, stamp it down. You're too right soft. Now. Amy's the worst business person. We we'll get an email to her. And she's like, oh, should we just do it for free? I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so yeah, thanks so much for listening, everybody. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Yeah. If you're on podcasts, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Absolutely. Because we just heard in the news today, Joe Rogan. Yeah. Biggest podcast in the world. Yeah. Just signed a deal with Spotify. Much. Hundred million dollars. Hot. I mean, congratulations, Joe. That's where we hope to be in about two and a half years. <laughs> Don't abuse my touchpad like that. What are you playing at? <laughs> wow. That's uh, mad, isn't it? Yeah, and he got there through reviews, yeah? Reviews? It's people leaving reviews. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's how he did it. So help us out. Yeah. Help us get to... Row to one milli, we'll call this, hashtag. If you leave uh, five reviews of five stars, I'll send you some stickers. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, yeah, if you're on YouTube, make sure you press subscribe and press the little bell because yes. we need some subscribers as a brand new channel. Yeah, and we're only at the beginning of this journey. So to come along, make sure you click the notification bell. You, you had a good time, babes? Well, I've had a great time talking to you, Chris. Getting a bit hot in your mum's attic bedroom now. So uh, yeah. best round this up, is yeah. it? Yeah. All right then, lads. We'll, uh, we'll catch you next time. Okay. One, two, three. Bye. bye. Richards.